This episode of News Dump is brought to you by Upstart. Soon may the Wellerman come to bring us sugar and tea and rum. One day when the tonguing is done, we'll take our leave and go. Yeah, I mean, we were going to discuss the internet's latest obsession with sea shanties on News Dump this week. Felt real good. But uh, as with most things, the trend, it's already hit its peak, and it's currently trailing off into obscurity once again. But I loved it while I was here. It's like the 90s swing craze. Yeah. You know, much faster and smaller. Yeah. Uh, But look, for a few short weeks towards the end of 2020 and at the beginning of the new year, sea shanties, they really picked up steam because of TikTok. And they eventually, of course, spilled over uh, into Twitter, resulting in what is probably the most genuinely joyful trend we've seen uh, so far this year, which has been, you know, mostly filmed filled with doom and gloom. So it was a nice thing to have in the midst of everything. Yeah. And it's it's, uh, you know, those songs uh, were originally written for... um, just people bored out of their fucking minds out in the middle of the sea, mm-hmm. uh, suffering from isolation. And uh, it was a way for them to... Scurvy? <laughs> way for them to, you know, have fun and, and feel a human connection. And it's, uh, you know, we're in a, in a lot of ways, we're all Very similar. Uh, just lost at sea right now. And instead of uh, singing along with the rest of the crew on the ship, there's the, duet, uh, the duet-like thing on TikTok where you can virtually sing along with yeah, your friends. Yeah, where the, the th- the, 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 they just keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah, and but smaller. it sounds great. It, it does. It really does, uh, it does. sound it's good. It's a beautiful on thing. I mean, between, between the TikTok thing and then that Ratatouille musical that was made entirely on TikTok a few months back. Uh, and them banning Trump. Yeah. YouTube. Pretty much irrelevant now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, We are on a sinking ship here. And Twitter is just like whatever's left over from TikTok just gets posted on there. But since we're on a sinking ship, at least we can can sing some shanties. Anyway, speaking of doom and gloom, you're almost certainly aware by now that we should probably mention the fact that uh, Trump got impeached again. Yeah. Two times, baby. (laughs) He's the first president in history to get impeached twice. Yeah, I saw like a stat where it's like, if you were born before, like before 1988, You've been alive for 75% of all presidential impeachments. Yeah. I don't think it's slowing down. Yeah, no. Uh, What was it? Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene is going to file for uh, the impeachment of Joe Biden uh, on Tuesday or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, We've got a couple couple great years to look forward to. Uh Anyway, the general question that seems to have risen is... uh, why it's even worth a second impeachment when at this point he's got a few days left in his presidency and they took away his Twitter, so it's it's almost like he's not even there. Yeah, <laughs> it and, kind of is. And the, the quick, simple answer is that there should be consequences for this asshole's actions. Mm-hmm. Um, but also impeaching him successfully would prevent him from running for office again. So that's the point. Um, also, it would take away his... Uh, his pension? Yeah, he's supposed to get $200,000 a year and plus a million dollar travel, travel. Bu- budget. Yeah. So get that. Get rid of it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's not as if it's a simply pointless or symbolic endeavor. Uh, the fact that the president got impeached again, uh, feeling like a side story the past few weeks, that really does say something about how <laughs> terrible this year is already. Though. Yeah, yeah. We get through, I got through the whole week and I was like, mm, what happened for news dump? Oh, yeah, the president was impeached yeah, again. Again. Yeah, it was like... Just a little bump in the road uh, as of every, uh, compared to everything else that went on this week, which is absurd. But uh, I'm tired of living in interesting times. <laughs> look, here's some good news out of the standard news cycle, though. Uh, thoughts and prayers are in order because the NRA has officially filed for bankruptcy. Take the NRA out back and put it down. <laughs> With what? <laughs> um, yeah, good question. Yeah, no, uh, according to court documents filed on Friday, they have filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and they made sure to let everyone know that they are leaving the state of New York and moving their operation down to Texas, just like Joe Rogan. Yeah. And, and every other tech and bro. Elon and, Musk. Yeah. Uh, this is almost certainly because the NRA was getting sued by New York Attorney General Letitia James, whose lawsuit claims that the NRA was using its nonprofit status for tax fraud, and they just spent millions of dollars for personal use. Hmm. Um, according to That's all according to CNN. And uh, according to them, James responded to the group's bankruptcy announcement Friday in a terse statement saying, quote, the NRA's claimed financial status has finally met its moral status. Bankrupt. Got him. Yeah, nice. Uh, She also added that just because they're relocating to Texas and filing for bankruptcy uh, doesn't mean that the lawsuit filed on behalf of the state of New York is going away. No, it's uh, double jeopardy. Can't sue someone uh, in absentia. Yeah, uh, also, it's kind of the same thing that uh, people were saying when Trump officially became a citizen of Florida. It was like, hey, look, buddy, you're still going to have to answer to the Attorney General Mm -hmm. of New York. Yeah. Um, Nope, nope, I moved to Florida. It's fine. Anyway, if you do like guns, there are a lot of 
much better gun rights organizations out there that do pretty much what the NRA originally did, which was like hold classes for like gun safety. Yeah, and, yeah. And uh, instead of just whatnot. being bad faith actors online. Yeah, yeah, instead of being this weird like right wing political operation. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, look into that. Look into your local chapters for gun safety and all that kind yeah. of stuff. If you want. But uh, yeah, but that's not all the fun legal stuff we have for you today. Remember the guy who sued Twitch because female streamers on their platform were simply too hot that he couldn't contain himself. Yeah. And by himself, I mean his cum. <laughs> uh, that guy was Eric Estevio. And just as an additional refresher for all of you, in that lawsuit against Twitch, he claimed that basically Twitch was responsible for, among other things, him masturbating so furiously that it caused redness and burns on his penis. He must be circumcised. <laughs> yeah, it was so hard that it, uh, he cummed so hard one time that it got on his monitor and caused it to short circuit and start a small fire. I don't know. I, I, that seems a bit fantastical, but the, listen, it's in the lawsuit. Yeah, he's a regular Peter North. Seems like something you wouldn't admit unless it really happened to you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, he's back with another frivolous lawsuit. And he, we went over this the last time we talked about it, but he, he has a long history of Yeah, but he said that he lawsuit. wasn't going to do them anymore. And this is his now, I believe it's his second one since he said he was going to stop doing them. He's got two fetishes, e-girls and suing people in hilarious uh, doom <laughs> Self-deprecating ways. Um, but uh, yeah, this, is, this new one is now the second lawsuit since he said he would do no more frivolous lawsuits. So... What is Eric Estevio up to now? Well, uh, he is suing Twitter.com along with representatives Alex or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and Ilhan Omar. Okay. And if you're wondering if this lawsuit is just as stupid and pointless as the others, well, you're right. He's suing Twitter for suspending Donald Trump's Twitter account. Uh, and he's also requesting a retaliatory ban on AOC and Ilhan Omar's accounts for, quote, promoting Eastern communist philosophies. Uh, you grab the popcorn. Uh, we will read the complaint and see what he's upset about this time. Let's let's go. How who would have ever guess this guy is a right winger MAGA? Person? No, no. He is, as listed in the complaint, he is an active Democrat who is just upset because uh, he likes to see discourse on Twitter from both sides. And Twitter, by banning Donald Trump, is now taking one thing away from him. So he can't right. be an informed voter. So you see that, centrist? Is this the people you want associated with? Yeah. Pick a side. Uh, here's the complaint or parts from the complaint. We can't read the whole thing. We'll link it below. The plaintiff, Mr. Estevio, immensely objects, condemns, and seeks restitution for the unsolicited and overbearing pain and suffering he has experienced after the sitting president, Donald J. Trump's Twitter account was banned, as well as seeking justice for the 88.7 million other followers who are now suffering adverse mental effects as they too were heavily invested in his account. It goes uh, over the AOC and Ilhan stuff that we mentioned as well, and then uh, talks about how Twitter is limiting free speech and how they're now acting as a publisher and not a host of content, making them liable for what's posted on their website. Yeah. Uh, as to why he's filing this, the complaint goes on to say that, quote, Mr. Estevio suffers from a myriad of health issues, including but not limited to clinical depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, panic disorder, agoraphobia, and Crohn's disease. Due to these health issues, he has no friends and rarely leaves the house except for inflectra infusions for his Crohn's disease and heavily relies on Twitter for political discourse, debates, arguments, and relies on the fairness of hearing all sides of a political story and needs to hear voices from the full political spectrum on Twitter to make informed decisions, especially before voting in an election as he did this past year. This is He said this exact same yep. shit in the Twitch lots. A lot like, of the same reasons. I'm housebound. Uh, Twitch is my only gateway to the world, and they're ruining it with all these titties and movies. Yeah, it was like, uh, you know, he doesn't want to masturbate, but he has to. Yeah. And the whole Twitch thing was because he said that uh, there wasn't, like, a gender exclusion option. Yeah. And, like, the fact that the algorithm was feeding him female streamers was the reason that he became, like, a uh, uh, sexual deviant to himself. Yeah. But he was also mad about like getting banned from uh, mm -hmm. like some <laughs> from chat rooms. How can they ex exclude me? Yeah, you want to be excluded. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, a lot of the, it's it's this is all a bit of deja vu. This mm -hmm. guy's sort of got one style of lawsuit. He's home twenty four seven. He's lonely. He just wants to crank his hog and read some goddamn free flowing political discourse so he can make an informed decision that has that has an effect on the lives of millions based off of a meme he enjoys. Yeah. I guess allegedly I. Uh, okay. Me and 88 million people are adversely affected because we can't see the president's shit posts. Have you seen, uh, the, I think it was yesterday, it was the first time where he essentially started sending out Twitter-sized 
memos from the office of the president. Nice. Like, as official releases, and that's how he's tweeting now. It's great. He's going to be using pigeons once he's out of office. Mm -hmm. The complaint then brings up that now famous Among Us stream with AOC and Ilhan, where, according to his filing, quote, instead of AOC streaming with any disenfranchised or poor, unpopular people that she constantly talks about on Twitter, she decided to instead stream the game with famous and popular rich Twitch streamers, such as Pokimane, who is a multimillionaire, and Hasanabi, who has previously said America deserved 9-11. Uh, it goes on to complain about Ilhan's expensive gaming PC setup and that, quote, AOC even has a white boyfriend and would never think of dating a Mexican such as the plaintiff, but she'll often cry out on Twitter for racial equality. Oh, my fucking God. <laughs> she would never date someone like me. It, like, people, this, people joke about it all the time, but it's true. Like, a lot of the people that hate AOC are just really fucking horny mm -hmm. and it frustrates them uh did you see, did you see those uh, fake tweets from like the capital keep ring? nancy pelosi and obviously and diane feinstein because they are not hot not hot <laughs> did you see those fake tweets from the capital raid where it was like aoc is just like someone stole all my shoes from my house. <laughs> and she literally like like a couple days they, they, they later, went on a panty raid in my office enough people were sharing the fit she like actually addressed it on twitter <laughs> and she's like no my shoes weren't stolen but my life was possibly in danger. Yeah. But uh, it was like it was like the movie Animal House in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's incredible. Really something, yeah. Um, okay. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, we'll link, leave a link to the full court filing in the description <laughs> below. If you want to read all of it yourself, there's a lot more where that came from. Yeah. But let's leave the real world behind now and jump into the world of Hollywood. Yes. Right after this word from today's sponsor, Upstart. Yeah. If you have multiple credit cards, you know that tracking multiple balances, due dates, and website logins can be stressful. How can I hold all these logins? Mm -hmm. Upstart makes things simple with one monthly payment in one place. Upstart is the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment. As someone who climbed out of terrible credit card debt in my 20s, this is very useful. Yeah. Uh, Upstart finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. As someone who had the worst credit score possible in their 20s, this is good. Uh, with a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans from uh, $1,000 to $50,000. You can get approved the same day and can receive funds as fast as one business day. If debt is taking over your life, it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today by going to upstart.com slash newsdump. That is upstart.com slash newsdump. Don't forget to use our URL or click below to let them know that we sent you. Uh, loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided on your loan application. Uh, go to upstart.com slash news dump. Thank you for sponsoring the show. Yes. All right, back to the news. And now let's focus on some stuff that's completely inconsequential. Entertainment news. Yeah, let's do it. Entertainment. Yeah, that's right, baby. It's news dump. So let's see what the entertainment industry has for us since we last left you. And, uh... Yeah, it looks like it's back. We're back to playing one of our greatest hits because Quibi is back in the news. <laughs> that old dead horse. The dead don't die. That someone bought that horse's corpse. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Quibi, it is dead. It went under months ago. Why is anyone talking about Quibi in 2021? Well, it's because a company has swooped in to pick the last little bits of flesh off of Quibi's rotting corpse at Bargain basement prices. <laughs> You're not going to believe these deals. Absolute steal. <laughs> prices so pathetic that Katzenberg and Whitman should be ashamed of themselves. Because now we all actually get to see just how much these productions were worth to someone who didn't have $2 billion <laughs> worth of investment cash. And dare I say, it's still too much. In a deal that we don't even think makes sense for this new platform, Roku has acquired most of Quibi, Quibi's content. Uh, for somewhere under or around a hundred million dollars. Hey, you have a Roku. Congratulations on all the new content. I will never watch it. Nothing interests me. I watched the Reno 911 episodes when it was free on the trial. A hundred million dollars is still very stupid. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, again, <laughs> it's way too much for any of this crap. Uh, and even at that discounted price, it is going to take Roku till the end of time to recoup the money through just advertising, which is how they're making money off of it. Hmm. 
But hey, at least all those Quibi shows will now be available for free as, as long as you have the Roku app or a device and you don't mind watching commercials. But let's be honest, if anyone really truly cared about any of these shows, they would have watched them for free on the Quibi app during the three month free trial yeah. that was offered, uh, by the way, during the height of being locked down with nothing else to do. Yeah. So if you didn't watch it then, I don't think you're going to watch it now. It's literally just marketing to, for them to be like, hey, by the way, we do have an app on our service that has free shows on it. But really, I think Pluto has the lion's share of that kind of uh, shit now. I think, yeah. like, when I look for free content to watch, Pluto's pretty solid. I'm all about that PBS app. I watched three episodes of Ask This Old House last night. I learned about plumbing and how to prevent your washing machine from leaking all over your floors. I do love PBS, and I do <laughs> don't. I, it is provided by, financially by members like me. I do uh, give yeah. money to PBS, so I unlock all of the local shows too. But uh, having said that, Pluto has a channel completely dedicated to this old house. It's oh, just 24 shit. hours a day. Screaming. That's wild, because even on the PBS app, you only have access to the most recent seasons of This Old House and Ask This Old House. Yeah. Also, uh, Frontline. I watched a great Frontline episode about uh, Alex Jones, and they, they updated it within like three days after the Capitol riots yeah. uh, with like new content. Great show. Uh, I guess what we're saying here is no one cares about Quibi programming. Yeah. When you Fuck have... Quibi. <laughs> watch PBS. Watch PBS. <laughs> it's free. But yeah, look, if you were going to watch Quibi, you would have watched it back then. Nobody wanted it then. And we'll be goddamned if anyone wants it now. Yeah. Just bury it. Yeah. Anyway, a somewhat funny side note to this content acquisition by Roku is the fact that they have completely passed on acquiring any part of Quibi's turnstile technology, <laughs> which is responsible for the groundbreaking ability to rotate your phone and watch things in a different aspect ratio. Yeah. So I do appreciate that that idea is fully fucking dead. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it obviously, it makes sense for Roku to want nothing to do with that because an overwhelming re majority of Roku users watch these offerings on their TV, not their phones. You can't rotate the TV except that one that was at CES a few years back. By the way, I saw that one on sale during Christmas for like next to nothing. Hey, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Quibi TV. Yeah. Also, Quibi's getting sued by that company Echo for allegedly infringing on their patent, and Roku wants no part of that. Yeah, they're like, oh, do you, you mean you want us to acquire that that thing by the company that's suing you? Nah, nah. So sorry, kids. Uh, watch your Quibi shows the old-fashioned way, in a widescreen format with longer run times and ads that run between everything on a proprietary uh, streaming uh, service. By the way, this is uh, still within one year of Quibi launching. That it has completely been dismantled, sold off, and now appears in a classic format. Yeah, we're uh, we're about one year since the Super Bowl, and oh, uh, with the first Quibi the ads, first Quibi we're ads like, were what is this like, a food delivery yeah. service? <laughs> no one knew what it was. Yeah. Uh, anyways, moving on to Marvel news, WandaVision is now streaming over on Disney Plus, and while we haven't yet watched it ourselves, the general response it does seem to be pretty favorable, although. With Marvel properties, anytime we don't see people essentially explode into confetti with their reviews, it usually means because uh, it means that the show didn't meet their expectations. Was, yeah, I've seen a lot of uh, apologizing on behalf of Wandavision. Like, oh yeah, you know they have a, it's like a one trick pony, but it does that one trick pretty well. I saw that tweet. Uh, again, <laughs> uh, we haven't seen it, so we can't judge. But hey, it's a series on, you know, Disney Plus. If you have nothing, you have, you basically have nothing to lose by watching it if you already have the service. Yeah. So there you and, go. And Disney needs your money right now. We'll get to it. But on the topic of Marvel, news broke this week that shocked Marvel Nation. Chris Evans is actually going to return as Captain America. Somehow, in some form or another. And many people asked, but why? Why would Chris Evans agree to this when he's been previously quoted as saying he was done with the character? Well, if your answer was the money, congrats, you're smarter than half the people on Twitter and therefore the world. According to sources who spoke to Deadline, the deal would have Evans reprising his role for at least one Marvel property with the door open for a second film. Uh, sources add it's unlikely to be a new Captain America installment, more likely to be what RDJ did after Iron Man 3 appearing in such films as Captain America Civil War and Spider-Man Homecoming. I think, it was, I think the best tweet I saw was Dan Casey's where it was uh, the, no, I don't think I will, but it was, <laughs> they offered him like, it was like an absurd amount of money. He's like, no, I think I will. So, uh, look forward to that, I guess. But let's talk about video game movies. Surprise! Yep, there's still a Mortal Kombat movie coming out this year. Mortal Kombat! And look, we know what you're thinking. Why make a new movie when the first one was perfect? <laughs> Maybe I'm alone in that. But uh, anyways, they're doing it. And this time it's going to be rated R. And as previously reported, 
it not going to be holding back. They're going to be showing fatalities. So there you go. They have uh, babalities and friendships. <laughs> friendships. Uh, sadly, we won't be able to see this in a theater surrounded by other Mortal Kombat fans who are all waiting patiently for the techno theme song to hit so we can collectively lose our minds that and start song, dancing in the stands. Fucking, that song's almost 30 years old and it still slaps so hard. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> it, using any other song in this movie is an abomination. Yeah. Uh, anyways, um, you can't do that. We can't see it in theaters, and that's because, like a majority of Warner Brothers films scheduled for release this year, for some reason, Mortal Kombat's going straight to VOD on HBO Max. Oh, man. Can't fathom why. Must be some kind of pandemic. Yeah. So what's the latest on the old Mortal Kombat movie? Uh, well, it's actually pretty funny that we learned about the existence of updates regarding the Mortal Kombat movie solely because of people posting memes on Twitter roasting a freshly released screenshot of Jax in the film for looking like a jacked up Steve Harvey. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't remember him having that big of a mustache <laughs> in the I game. don't hate it. But um, yeah. Anyway, Entertainment Weekly got the exclusive stills from the film. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's going to be one of those so bad it's good films, not unlike the first one. Although we maintain the original has aged quite gracefully. The second one, not good, is hilarious, but it's, it's genuinely terrible. The, the screenshots that they released on Entertainment Weekly, if you... If I hadn't seen the first one and I was like, oh, what did it come out? 94 or something like that? And you showed me these screenshots, I'd be like, yeah, that's the first movie. Yeah. I mean, Mortal Kombat makes no sense as a like <laughs> narrative story. It's a ridiculous franchise. It's the, the it's very one-dimensional. So like, <laughs> I don't know. I yeah. mean I don't think there's really any way to make a Mortal Kombat movie really work in an, and be like art. The first one was great. It was like, hey, by the way, you want to come fight right. people in a that's, mystical island? That's the only way it works. It's like it's a stupid fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. Just embrace it. Now, it still doesn't bode well that there has, there at this point, hasn't even been a trailer for the movie, considering we're just a few months away from its release. But since it's just coming to HBO Max, I guess it really doesn't matter. You can't show way. any of it. It's so, it's so bloody and violent. Yeah. So uh, many fatalities. Plus, we probably, personally... I would just avoid watching any trailers because any surprises at all, I would want to actually save for the film. Yeah. Like, I don't want to see a fatality in the trailer. No. I want to see it in the film and be like, oh, wow, they really went there. Jesus Christ. They ripped that man in half. <laughs> Anyways, uh, here's some additional info that uh, Entertainment Weekly revealed alongside the stills. Quote, when you think of Mortal Kombat, you think of blood. Buckets of it. But blood, as director Simon McCoy thought of it for the upcoming video-inspired movie reboot, has many meanings. Quote, Blood represents family. Blood represents a connection. Blood represents who we are. Without getting too overcomplicated, what we did is use blood executionally. The fuck are you talking about? This is, yeah. Mm, I don't know. Yeah, this is uh, you're really not selling us on the indication that it, it sounds like this is going to be more like a Fast and Furious <laughs> than the campy gore fest that it has to be. Yeah. Anything anything beyond that is a bad idea. Just the ending is just Scorpion and Sub-Zero driving two cars looking at each other yeah. and forking off in different directions. I'll see you again. <laughs> uh, yeah, he continues, quote, it's like a family drama. <laughs> it's like a family drama with excitingly brutal fighting. That's the image of this movie for me. What? No. Stop it. <laughs> You're overthinking this. It's Mortal Kombat. <laughs> just <laughs> do a live action Fight scenes over and over and over again. God. Yeah. Release uh, it weekly on HBO Max. Just be like, yeah, uh, this week we're going to have Sub-Zero versus Scorpion, and we're going to have Jax versus Sonya Blade. Uh, it's going to be insane. I mean, just, they can do what they Sonya's did. Sonya's going to punch him directly in the testicles, and he's going to go, oh! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you're going to love it. They, they could bring back the Machinima Channel, uh, put it on, or Machinima Prime, put it there like they did the, the Mortal Kombat Rebirth or whatever. This time it's called Machinima Plus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Machinima, the third time's a charm. Uh, okay, yeah, so, I don't know. There's a lot more in that article um, where they, they do explicitly remind people that this is a Mortal Kombat movie. There will be gruesome shit in it, so I don't know, whatever. Uh, we're definitely excited about this either way because uh, it's either going to rock or be utter shit. Maybe at the same time. Could be both. But either way, it's going to have to... It needs to be entertaining. Like, at least the one time that you watch it, you got to be like, oh, wow, like... Kung Lao literally ripped a man's dick off. Did you guys see the part where yeah. he ripped a man's dick like, off? Like, it has to be a hard R. Yeah. He cut a man's head off with his hat. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Mortal Kombat hits HBO Max in April, and I guess we'll see you there. They, I, I think it's like April 6th or something. They need to release it on April 20th. We should do a watch-along 
I don't know. I don't think HBO Max has that, but we could like time it. Yeah. 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 Like we, we like we did with uh, Bill and Ted. If Warner Brothers executives, we know that you watch the show. Change the release date to April 20th. What are you doing? Oh, my God. You need to be blazed to see this mm-hmm. movie. Uh, anyways, finally today, I got to do a little shout out, a little rest in peace uh, memorial for <laughs> the Disneyland annual pass, which wow. has been completely shut down by Disneyland. Coronavirus ruins yet another staple of American life. And you hate to see it, although I will say I did only get super into it at literally the last part of it of its, its existence. Yeah. I literally only started going last year. So it is kind of like nice that I got to see it before it was gone. But realistically... They're doing this because the there is such pent up demand for going to this park that once once the vaccine jack up all the prices again. yeah once the vaccines they're like okay everyone can come back in it's gonna be outrageous trying to go to this theme park they're not gonna let a bunch of people in who paid like five or six hundred dollars once come in and get a churro every night yeah because that's how it was for a long time they'll eventually go back to that albeit at higher prices but I think the saddest thing when I read this was just like another one of those realizations that like. You know, everything really did change when COVID hit, where it's like when you live in the in the future, far away from now, there is going to be that. Remember everything before COVID? Remember to go, going to like Coachella, like nothing was wrong. We went there. We got wasted. Yeah. Thousands of people crammed in with each other. Like it's going to be a long time before things are back to normal. Yeah. If they ever are. And this is just another one of those things where it's like, yeah, look, life's not going to be the same ever again. Yeah. So, I guess I got to go to Florida now. Mm. At least I get to see the family as long as they survive COVID. Anyways, that's it for today's episode of News Dump. Be sure to check out our two most recent episodes over here to bring you up to speed to edit everything that's happened so far Welcome this month. Welcome to the new year. New year, new uh, same us. Yeah, and there's so. a weekly weird news coming up in a day or so, and I, I, it's a lot. There's so much shit to cover. And then next week's the inauguration. There's no... Sl- and then right after that, wouldn't you know it? Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> most important day of the year. <laughs> Nothing is slowing down. Mm-hmm. So stay tuned. Uh, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you all soon. Bye.